Hello and welcome to Mean Brews. Today I'm covering English Old Ale. Let's get right into the data. I found 28 Old Ale recipes. Three were best of show, 12 gold, 7 silver, 2 bronze, and 4 that were award winning. Um, my histogram of, of recipes by year, uh, the oldest I have is back in 1988, uh, all the way to 2019. Couldn't find any more recent recipes. Very very difficult data to obtain for this style. A um, uh, new slide here just for this style. I uh, looked at how old were these from bottling uh, before they meddled, and the average was about two years uh, before they started meddling, all the way up to five and a half years old. So this is a style you definitely want to age. Uh, the BJCP style is 17B, uh, a strong, stronger than average English ale, Though usually not as strong a rich as an English barley wine. We'll see about that. Um, but usually malty. Warming. Shows positive maturation effects of a well-kept aged beer. Um, surprisingly, when I looked at this style, I saw a tremendous amount of evolution. Uh, we'll cover that as we get through the presentation. Uh, and quite a bit of variation between recipes as well. Looking at original gravity... Um, the average here was 1.089, which was right at the top end, above the top end of the style. I think people are probably entering their barley wines here, all the way up to 1.121, uh, and meddling in barley wine, or meddling in old ale. Uh, I'm going to be right at the average here, 1.089. Final gravity, uh, again, because we had a bigger beer to start, it's going to be bigger to finish. Uh, average was 1.024. And I'm going to be at the low end of that based upon my mash profile and um, the uh, strain of yeast that I chose to use here. For bittering units, um, the average was 43 uh, and well beyond both sides of the BJCP range. I'm going to be well below uh, the uh, range for BJCP because we are seeing a very strong correlation showing IBUs just dropping like a rock here over time. So and it's starting up in the 80s and then all the way down to uh, low 20s uh, for based upon it where it's trending. For the color, the BJCP range is somewhere between 10 and 22. We had one that went up, or a few that went up to 30. Again, on the high side, average was 20.8 or 41 EBC. I will be at 22, 23 for my recipe. Uh, for the average malt types for, for this style, uh, the average was 87.8% base malt, 7.7% .7 crystal, 2.2% toast, 0.7% roast, and 1.6% adjuncts. If you look at if they use this uh, the, the malt, 100% um, of the recipes used a base malt at an average of about 87% of the grist. Uh, I'm going to be just under that at... Uh, 85% of the grist is going to be base malt. Um, we're seeing that trend down, which is why I've chosen to go 85. Um, good, good correlation there. And for the other malts, um, we had the most next most prominent was crystal. About 90% of the recipes used a crystal malt at an average of about 8 or 9% of the grist. Uh, then we had roast malt. Half the recipes used a roast, probably just for color. Uh, at about 1% of the grist. Uh, toast malts, 45% uh, of the recipes used a toasted malt at 5% of the grist. And then adjuncts, we had just under a third of the recipes use an adjunct at, again, about 5% of the grist. I'll be using just above the mean for crystal, uh, right at the mean for toast, and just under the mean for roast malts in my recipe. Um, looking at the trend for crystal, it's going up to 9% over time. Roast is going up to almost 2% over time. Um, and that's about it. Um, base malts, there were five different base malts used. Maris Otter or a Pale Ale malt or something along those lines, Golden Promise. Uh, at about 80% of the grist was the average, and that's where I'll be. Uh, the next most prominent was Munich, uh, about 30 7% of the recipes used a Munich malt at about 
uh, 10 to 12 percent of the grist and then we had some other wheat mild and Vienna malts which were in small proportions of, or small uh, samples. I will be using Munich at about 5 percent of the grist here. Um, I'm using more uh, Maris Otter because we're seeing less and less Munich used and more Maris Otter used as part of the base malt, percentage of the base malt. Crystal malts, uh, medium crystal, most prominent 50% of the recipes at about 6% of the grist. Uh, and then light and dark crystal, both tied, about a third of the recipes use those. Um, somewhere in a range between 2 and 10% of the grist. Uh, we also had special B in a few recipes, about 15% of the recipes use special B, and a couple used care pills. I'll be using medium crystal at 6%, actually at 5, sorry. Uh, five and four, these are wrong. Uh, medium crystal at 5% of the grist and light crystal at 4% of the grist. Uh, these stars are wrong, I apologize for that. I'm not going to use a dark crystal and the reason is we're just not seeing that used as much anymore. Good, good correlation here showing dark crystal is not used to, in this style to achieve color or those flavor profiles. Toasted malt's kind of busy but uh, Quite a few different toasted malts. Uh, this is a special spice I think people have for this style. Aromatic, special roast, honey, victory, and melanoidin. Um, people just picked their, their preferred here. I'm gonna split it up and use two and a half percent of both aromatic and special roast uh, to achieve that 5% that uh, I presented earlier. Uh, roast malts, chocolate malt was the most used. Almost a third of the recipes used used chocolate malt and then some variation of the others, uh, other roasted type malts. Uh, I'll be using 0.7% of uh, chocolate just to achieve color, really not a flavor contribution. Uh, we are seeing an increase in the percent to, I said I'm at 0.7, but I don't want it too dark. Uh, I'm already uh, as high as I want to go for that for the SRM. Um, adjuncts, um, molasses and clear candy syrup. I think this style traditionally has some sort of simple syrup uh, included in it or uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, whatever simple syrups they make uh, in the UK for their beers. Uh, I'm not going to use any flaked or torrified or simple sugars here for this style. It just wasn't uh, in the data that said I needed to use it. A bittering ops. Uh, most prominent was EKG, followed by Magnum and Northern Brewer. That's about 50% of the recipes. And then we had some other British or American British style hops here. And then these are all one-offs, uh, different, different bittering hops that people used. Total of 16 different bittering hops were used for the 28 recipes. I'll be sticking with EKG for bittering. Uh, we are seeing an increase in the use of Magnum. Uh, I think probably because of its acid, uh, alpha acid percentage. As a bittering hop, you use less hop matter to get the same amount of bitterness, so feel free to substitute EKG for uh, Magnum if you want to for this style. Had six different flavor hops used, EKG more than half. No surprise here, I'm going to use EKG for flavor. Uh, aroma, we had nine aroma hops used. Uh, EKG again, 50% of the recipes that used it um, used aroma hops. Uh, I'm not going to use an aroma hop for this style. Uh, we had two recipes that used dry hops, Challenger and EKG. I won't be using a dry hop for my recipe. Uh, looking at the rate of hop additions, they're all over the place, uh, from 0 0.05 to 0 0.8 for all three, but really. 59%, um, uh, uh, two-thirds of the recipes used flavor hops at 0.27 ounce per gallon. Uh, 56 used aroma hops, which is a blue curve at 0.24 ounce per gallon. And then only 7%, two recipes used a dry hop at 0.49, which is pretty pretty big uh, hop dose there, uh, or 3.67 grams per liter. Um, I, since I'm only using the flavor hops, I'm going to be at 0 0.35, which is above the average of 0 0.27. I'm not going to use aroma or dry because we're seeing flavor hop uh, increases over time. Uh, the rate of, of hop additions is, to, is going to 0 0.35 ounce per gallon at flavor. 
Look at the robo hops. The we've got two curves here. The blue curve is the percentage of recipes that are using aroma hops, which is declining over time. But those that do use it are using more of it um, to a rate of about the same that we saw for flavor hops. Uh, because this is dropping so little, I've, I've taken aroma hops out. Mash type, all but one use the single infusion mash, and one use the step mash, just a Hawker's uh, beta and alpha amylase uh, rests, uh, but we're going to stick with a single infusion for my recipe. Uh, those mash rests, um, 144 was the uh, average for that one recipe for its beta rest, and then the main sacrification rests at 153. Uh, one, there we go. 144 for 35 minutes and 153 for 75 minutes was the average. Um, I'm going to be at 151, which is under the average because we're seeing, again, more evolution, a drop in the uh, main sacrification temperature to about 150, 151 over time. Boil duration, um, 60 minutes to 300 minutes. Um, this is where you get your concentration, I think, of the wort as you're uh, trying to achieve your original gravity. Uh, 110 minutes was the mean, and I'm not going to recommend a boil duration. Uh, you're going to boil until you hit your gravity, and you need to do a hard boil. Um, we looked at. I looked at. Uh, there were some styles that reported if they use the boil down method, which, if you're not familiar with that, is taking the first runnings. Um, from your mash tun and boiling it down to a syrup really hard and then adding it back to your kettle. Um, I wanted to see if this was something that people are using and some people are, but the propensity to use it over time is not uh, really showing up. So we're seeing a decline in the use of the boil down method over, over time here. We had 16 different yeasts used. The most prominent was Guinness strain, followed by SO4, Whitbread, Fuller's, Chico, and then a whole bunch of one-offs over here. Um, I am gonna be using 007, and I'll tell you why. Um, first, Firstly, SO4 and 007 were often confused for the same strain. I know that they're not by the DNA analysis that's been done, but their flavor profiles are very similar. That's one reason why I'm using 007. But we're also seeing um, the Guinness strain less and less used. Um, and I know this isn't a strong correlation coefficient. I'll address that in a second. But for SO4 and 007, we're seeing an increase in usage over time. And again, they're very similar flavor profiles. This Pearson's correlation coefficient is larger if you discount an earlier version of Mean Brews that I brewed that got gold using that yeast. So if I take out my 2018 gold old ale, this becomes more stronger, showing a decline in, I think I was the last in the data set to win with that yeast. Could not find a single water chemistry uh, other than my own um, that I used. So I'm gonna recommend using the bar, English barley wine water chemistry that I reported in an earlier video for this style. Fermentation temperatures, uh, the average was 66.6 uh, Fahrenheit or 19.2 Celsius, um, right at 67, and they all had the same average. These, these top three strains all fermented at 67, so it's pointing that's the temperature you want to ferment this style at. And, and there I am on the curve, 67. Um, other data, carbonation volumes, uh, average was 2.1 volumes of CO2, and the mash pH average was 5.45. All right, we're down to the recipe now. So quite a complex grain bill, but kind of makes sense if you uh, went through the video. 80% uh, Maris Otter uh, base malt. Uh, the other base malt is uh, Munich, and I'm using Environment Munich 1 at 5%. It gives me my... 85% uh, base malt percentage. For crystal malts, uh, medium crystal at five, light crystal at four, that's by 9% of crystal. My two toasted malts, aromatic and special roast at 2.5% each, uh, that's my 5% toast, and my 0.7% uh, roasted malts will be chocolate malt from Simpsons, or 
feel free to use whatever chocolate malt here. You're not getting a flavor profile there. Um, EKG, 15 IBUs, EKG at 60. Uh, we're going to use 0.36 ounce per gallon or 2.7 grams per liter at 10. Um, this is one ounce in a five gallon batch. This is two. So three ounces of hops total for this style. And then feel free to use 007, SO4, or 1098. Um, all similar flavor profiles. Original gravity 1.089, 25 IBUs. Uh, if you don't like my 25 IBUs, feel free to bump it up. Um, this is the water profile from uh, uh, that I'm using here to kind of match the Mean Brews English Barley Wine that we talked about earlier. Um, mash pH of 5.45, so use your favorite mash, uh, mash acid to achieve that, or acid malt. We're going to infusion mash it 151 Fahrenheit or 66 Celsius for 75 minutes. I want you to mash out sparge and run it as long as you can. You know, fly sparge this until you get 1.010 runnings um, and then boil it until you reach the gravity that you need. Track your boil, track how much your gravity points are increasing over time so you know when to add your hops. Um, but you need to get to that gravity and you want a heavy, strong boil here. Uh, chill it to 65 Fahrenheit, 9 Celsius, and I'm putting in a 2 liter starter for a 5 gallon batch of the Whitbread Dry Yeast. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to ferment at 67. That should be 10 Celsius, sorry, for 10 days. Uh, you want to raise the temperature as it starts to slow down uh, just to help it finish out. A bottle or keg for 2.2 uh, 2 volumes. And then age it for two years before enjoying or competing. All right, that's it for today's uh, video. Um, I plan to, uh, you'll, you'll notice my, my videos are more sparse. Recently, I've got a new job that requires a lot of travel. So I'm going to try to get on better, a better rhythm of getting these out um, once a month. So be on the lookout. I'm open to new styles. So comment in the video if you'd like to see a specific style covered. Um, I'm reaching here because we're running out of styles. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope to see you in a month or so. Bye-bye.